Hey guys, so it's Dean here with the demo of iOS 5. Now iOS 5 is of course the latest version of the iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad operating system, so let's go over some of the things that are new. Now probably the first and most important thing is the new notification. So of course if you guys remember, before it used to be the little blue pop-ups, and you know, they weren't awful, but they really weren't great. But now if you swipe down from the status bar, you will see that there is a new kind of drop-down menu, very, very similar to Android. Uh, so the way it works is you have a couple of widgets, so for example here's stocks and here is uh, your weather. And on top of that, any notifications that come in will be listed here. So for example, I have a reminder that I need to make this video, which is kind of a test. And if I want to, I can tap on that and it will bring us over to the application. Uh, it's pretty decent, it's not fantastic. Um, you know, it would be nice, especially if you could add custom widgets and all that kind of stuff. But overall, especially when you have lots of notifications, it's easy just to swipe and it works really quite nicely. The next app is going to be iMessages. Now iMessages is kind of like a BBM for iPhone. What it allows you to do is send and receive free text messages, and they're not actual text messages, they're transmitted over Wi-Fi or data, and they are available as well as on the iPod Touch iPad as well as of course the iPhone. Uh, now the way it works is very simple so as you guys can see here you can add contacts uh, so if you have a, some the person's phone number who you know is on iOS 5 and has an iPhone you can send it to them or if you have someone with an iPod touch or an iPad you can use their Apple email address so uh, it works pretty nicely you can add it to a contact and all that kind of stuff and the way that works is very similar to FaceTime. Uh, so the way it works so you guys can see here you can just scroll through your messages if I want to send a message I can certainly just type out whatever I like. I can also so I can click on the little button here. I could send a picture, so if I wanted to send Ty a picture or whatever, I certainly could do that. Another nice new feature is the additions to the camera. So from the lock screen, we can double tap and click the little camera icon. As you guys will see here, we do have the camera open and working. So it works pretty simply. We'll go ahead and rotate it here so you can take a picture just as before. However, there is a new option. So if I open this up here, if you have an iPhone 4, an HDR mode will be appear here where you can you know, toggle it on and off. You also have a grid mode where you can kind of help center your shots so that have a little grid on the screen. Uh, now on top of that, if I flip my iPod touch over here, you can now take a picture with the volume button. So if I click on it, there you go, we can take a picture. Um, I like that, I think it'll work a lot better on the iPhone than the iPod since it's a little awkward to hold it like that, but no big deal and it definitely is very nice to have an actual physical button. Now you guys may or may not have noticed, but I will shut off the camera app and open it back up. It's a lot faster, which is good. The camera app used to be awful. It's still not blazing fast, I'm sure it'll be faster on the 4S, but it is a nice improvement. There are a couple things we can do with the picture. So as you guys can see here, there are a few options such as emailing it, sending it as a message, using the wallpaper and tweeting it, and I'll get into the Twitter integration in a second. But there's also a new editing function. So, if we, for example, we want to rotate the picture, which shouldn't really be necessary, but uh, if you want to, you can do that. There's also an automatic resampling mode, auto enhance, whatever you want to call it, which will just kind of mess with the contrast and the saturation and all that kind of stuff. If you like, I'll go ahead and turn that off. Also, you can do red eyes, so we want to pick some red eyes. Of course, I don't have any in this picture, but you can uh, do that all from the device. And lastly, we do have crop, so we want we can kind of crop into one angle and do that. So uh, the camera app has definitely received a pretty nice overhaul. I'm pretty pleased with it. It does work really quite nicely. The next app is Reminders. Reminders is pretty similar to several other iOS apps. However, of course, this one does come pre-built and it works pretty, really quite nicely. So we want to create a new reminder here. We can say, um, oh, I don't know, upload video. It's kind of hard to type, but upload video, hit return. And there we go, so we're done. And then if we want, we can open up here. We can have it remind us, so send us a push notification. Oh, I don't know, in 10 minutes, or we can do whatever we want. And also show more, do priority, some notes, and of course delete. Another nice addition is the Twitter integration. So if you come to the settings and you open up the Twitter part, you can now install the tw official Twitter app straight from here as well as add your contact. And the way it works is, you guys can see here, you actually add your contact, or your, I uh, rather, your Twitter information, your login, you add it to iOS 5, and then from there you can enable, for example, Safari and Twitter and all that kind of stuff to actually use your account. So if we open up Safari here, I'll give you guys a little demo. So if we click the button here, we cannot tweet it, so let's say we're reading an article or you're seeing something you want to tweet, so go, hey, check 
this out and I can't type very well up here but uh, yeah so it works really quite nicely and the Twitter integration is in many many places around the operating system including Safari the photos app and several other places there are also some updates to help you just use the operating system better so for example take this little thing if you have a name for your device which I'm sure you do you can now change it from on the device which is nice so you know if you you name it like I do based on what firmware it's on and then it changes firmware you can really easily do that on top of that there is now wireless updates so let's say for example iOS 5.0.1 comes out tomorrow I could just open up the software update and it would automatically download it and I would be good to go instead of having to plug into iTunes and update and all that kind of stuff uh, lastly but certainly not least there is the iTunes Wi-Fi sync now of course if you guys have been jailbroken you know that there is a similar tweak that's been around for quite a while however now you don't even have to jailbreak you can just simply as long as your device is plugged in and your uh, it's on the same Wi-Fi network as your computer that you want to sync it with you can now do it wirelessly lastly there is the new newsstand so as you guys can see here it almost works a little bit like folders but Instead, you will be able to download magazines and newspapers and that kind of thing from the App Store. It's not currently enabled, however, by the time you guys watch this video, you'll be able to you know, do magazine subscriptions and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, guys, it's going to be about it for my demo of iOS 5. Overall, it's a really pretty solid update, and of course, it is free for everyone on an iPod Touch 3rd generation, iPod Touch 4th generation. It's compatible with the iPhone 3GS, the iPhone 4, the iPad 1, as well as the iPad 2. And obviously, it will be coming. It will be shipping with the new white iPod touches, as well as the iPhone 4S. So, anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to leave it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more content like this, be sure to subscribe.